So I'm here in Topaz Video AI version 6 and I'm looking to upscale some footage that was generated in Minimax and this was from a Flux image. So as you can see here, I've dragged the um, footage in and it's just playing. I've got the before on the left and the after on the right. Both are identical at the moment because I haven't made any changes. And to, to actually load a bit of footage into this is so easy. You just open the software and then you can just drag the clip from anywhere you like. I've got it on my desktop, let go, and it will just load it in. That's the simplest way to um, import a clip, a video clip in here ready to work on. So I'm going to stop the timeline playing here for a moment and just get it to a point where, you know, I like what's going on. There's some good details I can see. It doesn't really matter. Somewhere like that's fine. So what I'm going to be doing here is the way I work is partially because I've got quite a relatively slow Mac um, is when I make the adjustments, I'm going to just render on the minimum amount of frames possible, which is um, five frames, I believe. And then we can just keep checking our keep checking our results. So I'm going to make sure I click the tab on the right here, which is the after. So that's the one we're going to be applying our applying our effects to. And I can actually just double click this and call this um, edited or upscaled. You can change the title to whatever you like. I'm going to go to the adjustments section on the right hand side here and start at the top down. So enhancements is going to be on by default because I'm making some changes here. So that would have turned itself on anyway. So the output resolution at the moment, it's 720p, right? So it's 1072 by 720, so 720p virtually. I'm going to change this to two times upscale. So it's now 1440p, right? So I've just done a two times upscale, but you can specify anything you like, or you can choose a custom resolution if you want a specific size. Now video type, I'm leaving this on progressive. AI model, it highlights the suggested models with this little yellow icon next to them. And you can read here the different, the summary for the different use cases. And if you hover your mouse over the title of the sections, you'll get tooltip drop down with a little bit more information. Now, I find that, as it says here for most videos, Proteus is kind of pretty good for an all-rounder for doing this kind of footage. So I'm going to leave it on that, but feel free to um, experiment with the others. Now, add noise. I'm not going to touch this, but this isn't the same as adding grain after the fact. If you look at this here, it adds digital noise before processing. So it actually helps to try and compensate for over smoothing that can happen as part of the upscaling process. So just for now, so we're looking at the um, the big image. I'm going to actually click on the single view preview here, which lets us just look at the look at the image as a whole. Um, and if we click and hold our left mouse button down, it will show us temporarily the before version of the image when we start to add effects and things like that. So I'm going to go down. So we've taken care of the upscaling side of it. I'm going to go down here. I'm not going to add noise or recover detail on this particular one. I am going to add some grain. So I'm going to click apply grain. And this is where this is where um, creating a very short preview will really help you, especially on a slower machine. So I'm going to see what what the default sort of grain size looks like. So it, it's um, default settings is amount five and the grain size of two. So to actually now update our preview here with the with the adjustments that we've made, you need to go down to this blue button here and choose a preview sort of time that it will that it will use to update. And I only I only want to almost see it as a still image change at the moment because I just want to see visually what it's doing. So I click on minimum five frames. So now when I click render, you can see this little green line on the on the timeline here. That's just five frames that it's just rendered with the changes. So I'm actually going to change the magnification here to 100 percent so I could see properly what's happening. Now, if you, because I'm on the full screen or the one screen sort of preview mode, if I hold down my left mouse button, you can see it goes to the sort of the before image. So you can see all the grain disappear and it just looks a bit softer and a bit blurrier because it's not had that sort of quality upscaling applied at that point. But if you want to choose one of the other options, you've got like a split screen or as we had before the side by side, feel free to do that. Now, what's worth noting is we're looking at the grain here, and I quite like this, but I might want it to be a little bit smaller, a little bit more subdued. One thing to note is once you've previewed the frames and pre-rendered a few frames, as soon as you change anything on this right-hand side here, even if you just move a slider, it's going to knock that change completely out, and you're going to be looking at the before image again. So just bear that in mind. So if I go to reduce the grain here, if I just move the slider, 
just down one, you'll notice it immediately knocks the preview back. So every change you make here, you've then got to re-render the preview by clicking the button. So just bear that in mind. So I'm just knocking that down one. And I'll click render. We're only rendering five frames. So even on my um, M1 MacBook Pro, it doesn't take long to re-render. And now I can just move around and check the level of the grain on the whole image. And I think actually it's still a bit much. I'm going to knock that down to three. But I'm not going to re-render it again yet because I know I'm going to be making more changes in a second. So now I've got parameters. I'm going to click this, enable parameters. Now again, you can read the um, tool tips to get a bit more information on this. But generally speaking, if you leave these on dynamic, it's going to be a little bit more of a subtle effect. Whereas manual, it's going to be a bit more of an absolute change. So it doesn't really matter once you get used to one or the other. It's, um, it's absolutely fine. I normally keep it on dynamic. Now I don't really, I'm looking at the image, which is of course the before now, because I've made a change. But I'm looking at, looking at it for potential problems to try and address with these sliders. So compression on the original footage, there's a little bit. Um, I'm not going to go crazy with that, because if you do too much compression reduction, um, when there's not much to start with, it can um, actually lower the image quality a bit. Improve detail. Um, just put this up a little bit. Be wary of changing too many parameters at once because then if you don't like what you see when you re-render the preview, then you're not going to know what's caused it. So I'm actually going to just change those two things and just re-render those five, five frames. And that's five frames from wherever you're, you've clicked in the timeline, by the way, so it can be wherever you like. Okay. And hold down the left bus button to look at the before and the after. Make sure it's not sharpening things too much. We are at 100% here. Um, I don't really want to sharpen any more with the sharpen control because I don't think it needs it. Reduce noise. Nope, I've added some, so I certainly don't want to reduce any. There's no super obvious halo effects here. Anti-aliased blur. Yeah, so on the original, if you've got sort of um, aliasing artifacts, which is when it's kind of, you've got lots of jagged edges and things like that, you can um, push it one way or the other if you've got the opposite problem. I'm going to leave that as it is. So the next one, frame interpolation. So it's currently 25 frames per second. I'm going to double that, so I'm just going to change it to 50. Uh, slow motion, I'm not, not doing a slow motion effect on this. I'm going to leave that to none. And the AI model, so this, this second model we're choosing now relates specifically to the interpolation, so it's the change in the frame rate. And I like for this kind of thing, um, Chronos or Chronos Fast. And again, you can hover over the tooltip and you can really get a good idea of um, what's recommended for what. It's good to play around with the same bit of footage. If you get a short bit of footage and just see what works for you. But um, Chronos or Chronos Fast is quite a good um, all-rounder for um, this kind of standard frame rate change of like 25 to 50 or 30 to 60, that kind of thing. So I'm going to leave all the rest as um, sort of default for this one. Um, not going to choose HDR, not relevant, not going to stabilize, not going to do motion de-blur. So at this point now, I would just click re-render again, just to make sure I'm happy with the visual. Obviously, if you play, it's going to play a little short clip of the image with the um, new frame interpolation applied, but that's going to take more processing time. So now it's going to take longer to update a preview. So I'm confident that, you know, my experience is going from this kind of this kind of footage from 25 to 50 will look fine anyway. So I'm not too bothered about running a, long, a longer preview here just to see the frame interpolation. I'm happy with the amount of grain and the other elements that we added up here that we've already checked with a preview. So to do this now, you've got to make sure you've not got any in or out points selected on the timeline, which we haven't. Otherwise, it would um, it would just export that loop. But once you've done that, and to make sure you've got this icon in the bottom left corner here, that'll be lit up. This is clear in slash out. That'll be lit up if you can click on it. And if it is, click on that to get rid of it. And then export as, and then save it where you need it.